Okay, Aries, what's up, man uh, or woman? Welcome to your July 2020 love reading. Um, you are the last but not least one for this uh, go around. Um, after this are the financial readings. Um, oof. I need to know, you know, me being my my Aries myself, uh, I need to know what's going on. Because, oof, man, it's been a rough go. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. But we're making progress. We're making some steady advancements. We, we got a lot further along than we thought we could, I think, speaking for myself. Uh, in other areas of life, so I guess that kind of applies. I mean, you know, um, <clears throat> let's put it this way like, abundance in one thing is abundance in all things, if that makes sense. Uh, if you have like a, an abundance mindset then you could quite literally apply it to all areas of your life. You just, you know, for me personally, if I could find the understanding behind, you know, fuckery, for lack of a better word, then I'm okay. And I guess we're talking about love and relationships right now, but <clears throat> when I can't find, if you're like me, if I can't find some, like, logic or reason or understanding then it's like, oof. I try to find some reason or logic or understanding. And, you know, I like to believe that there's always some sort of understanding you could get in a situation that might be unsavory if it rubs you the wrong way. Um, but, yeah, it's just, I don't know, I guess it's just worth meditating on and trying to understand yourself or something, you know, instead of, like, flipping out on someone who is how they are, you know? And, uh, I guess I'm old enough to know that you can't change anyone, but young enough to still have some impulses, you know, for taking things personal or maybe caring more than, than other people might. Karen. No play on words, but, uh, you know, C-A-R-I-N-G versus, you know, K-A-R-E-N. Hmm. They say there's something in a name. But that's another story. Um, I got the star card in reverse. This is again Aries July 2020. Love. Star card in reverse is like you're going to have to do it by yourself. Uh, you're going to have to pick yourself up from your bootstraps in regards to love. And you're going to go out there and make it happen. Or you know go get her type energy. And if you don't pursue people like that. Then who knows. Uh, Six of Pentacles in reverse. I guess some form of, you know, lack of reciprocity here. This is a David Bowie deck. This is how it looks in reverse here. This is a tattoo tarot, by the way. This is how it looks in the upright. You got this star card in reverse. Aquarius, Uranus energy. You got the Six of Pentacles, slow moving Taurus energy. Lack of balance. Sixes are about three on each end, right? So, but... You, and yet you still have an understanding of this. I think that's what we were speaking about earlier is like that understanding as long as I could see the shit and 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 have some sort of understanding and not take it personally, then I could be you know musa about it or wusa about it. But I think where we get off kilter is that we tend to take things personally, but when you remove yourself and just see it objectively as just a form of energy, that has no reflection on myself, then then you don't then you don't um, have to get all riled up about it, um, and then you could just go on your merry way and then just do what you do. Because chances are, you know that person doesn't care anyways. That person is never gonna care as much as you care, and if something's worth caring about and thinking about. That person is never going to care as much as you're going to consider or reconsider or talk about. And sometimes I think it's like, well, shit, why even bother communicating anything? Things are just going to lie as they lie. Like, you can't, 
you know, I don't know, man. I just feel like people worth communicating to, you have to be at some certain, certain level of trust and respect. And if, like, you can't even have that, then it's like, what are you doing, man? I don't know if you I don't know if you can force trust or respect. I think that just has to be the natural groundwork. And you just gotta call a spade a spade. If it's not there, then it's not there. You know. Anyways, two of swords in the reverse, there's you're all jacked up in a form of a decision. But again, I think that comes from uh maybe lack of experience, lack of maturity here. Um Especially if I'm getting the sense that you're doing all the work here, you're doing all the suffering, you're doing all the challenging here with this lack of reciprocity with the Six of Pentacles and you're trying to make some sense of reason about it and it's kind of like looking at a red fire hydrant and, you know, kind of trying to rationalize why it's not like a green apple tree or something like that, uh, you know, growing red apples. Um, Something like that, like, you know, doing the Aries thing where you're banging your head against the wall. You could be dealing with some fixed energy. Interestingly enough, this might be a Aries woman here, signified with the ram's horns. Probably dealing with, you know, Aquarius energy like I am myself. <sighs> Which is definitely not fire energy. You know, the, the air energy could definitely whoop a, a, a fire uh, sign into a frenzy. Um... And, you know, water sign for that matter. But the fixed energy in the world card pertains to the uh, Aquarians, the Scorpios, the Leos, and the Taurus. So that could be posing some form of an energy lesson here. Um, that you're going to have to... I think a part of spirituality is looking at something objectively and removing yourself from it. And just, you know, again... Uh, that, that ego identification is kind of like the anti-hero, I think, to spirituality or objectification of something, um, in a good way objectifying something, not, not in a pejorative way, but again, giving enough space to energies to realize like, hmm, I'm trying to understand why am I reacting this way? What do I expect? What's the core of this? Am I, am I frustrated because I'm trying to hurt someone that, that will never be bothered to be hurt by me? In some weird way, shape, or form, I think our ego has it so that like um, we want to like hurt someone, like like we've been hurt or, or like they've hurt us. But but again, it's like those are ego energy lessons again, right? So I kind of feel like that's what this Two of Swords is because it's it's um, it's not even a decision. It's just some sort of like I don't know. But again, it's a matter of perception and perspective. It's all, it's almost seemingly if you put yourself in that situation right there. So, um, which again could lead to aggression with the Knight of Wands in the reverse here. So, if you're in a straitjacket or if you're in a Chinese finger trap, better not, you know, try to aggress your way out of there. Um, Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Good thing about Ten of Pentacles in Reverse is if you aren't already at the uh, goal end of the Nine of Pentacles in the Upright, um, you know, reading the Ten of Pentacles in the Reverse, then you might be close um, to that independence financially, emotionally, maybe um, in regards to, you know, some sort of like physical withdrawal or the need for someone to be there. Um, I know that that was kind of my issue of, you know, never wanting to live alone because I couldn't really quite wrap my head around it. But the older I get, the more I kind of understand um, needing that peace of mind to just be a wild man or woman in the comforts of your own home here. So I think pertaining to love, that's also healthy for your love relationship, whether single or taken. Ten of Pentacles in reverse again could symbolize someone in the immediate environment that might posing some sort of obstacle but again you know mental gymnastics uh i honestly do think that it's all just your perception and reality and expectations and and all that stuff you know uh 
yeah I, I totally saw this coming uh, the hanged man this is like some hanged man energy here with the two of swords here and double confirmation reiteration here um, but the good thing about that is that you get a sense of enlightenment and understanding and perspective and, and maybe if maybe if there is some sort of real deal out there for single and someone does come down the pipeline and it, you actually care about relationships in that regard then maybe all of this is just you know Jedi training for you uh, for when you do enter a relationship um, spirit uh, wrap it up yeah, you're coming out of some sort of hermitage mode. I get the sense that maybe this is one of those, like, you know, final lessons. Um, I wanted to say, like, fifth and final lessons. Almost as if... Uh, I know five is a really ugly energy. Um, with the five of swords here. So maybe that's kind of what I was picking up, like, that ugly energy. Um run tell that you know i mean i always preach like don't don't bother with this energy and and you know this is what you get here you get this lover card in the reverse meaning it may be the obstacle that ugliness that that deep-seated inherent um over identification personalization of any internal hurts that you feel and if you don't respect someone enough to communicate that because you don't think that you should have to then huh I don't know it's very interesting because then you got to play the game of like, and I'm completely projecting my situation on here, but please take it with a grain of salt because I, I believe that you, this is still a part of the message and the timing is everything. You know, I, I held off on doing this Aries reading and certainly some relationship woes or even, you know, friendship woes kind of presented itself. And, um... I don't know, and it kind of got me in gear to, to finish this last reading for for uh, the July Love Zodiac signs. Um, that being said, I kind of feel like, you know, this lover's in reverse here. Excuse me, makes me think of like a karmic situation almost. Some sort of mirror bizarro world of like like that anti-hero like everything that you would not want a relationship to be and i think it's showing you that because it's showing you where a relationship could head south um but in this case it's kind of showing you the south part first um which you're just like it's kind of bewildering because it's almost as if like you're starting the relationship at the very depths of it uh, because it's a relationship of like where you last left off uh, and where you last left off is some sort of projected image of, of kind of like your expectations for for another in this old paradigm of what you think a relationship is but you want nothing to do with that because you're seeing this nine of wands in reverse. You're like, <clears throat> I don't want any of that, man. That's all baggage. I'm not carrying that with me. Yeah, you got the five of cups. You're, you're getting over that. You're, you're like, I'm moving on. I'm not crying over spilled milk. I'm, a, I'm the milk man. Like, what the? I'm not going to cry over spilled milk. And then you got the Three of Swords here. Hmm. Maybe somebody less advanced is crying over spilled milk. I don't know. But funny enough, or it could at least pose, you know, like, you know, what you could be doing. Because the Five of Cups is getting over that. So if you're getting over that, you're not going into heartbreak. Unless you thought you got over it. But I guess what I'm saying is that it's okay to have these moments of pause, these moments of like 
oh, this is how I feel. But, and if it has to do with sadness, this Three of Swords energy, then it could be because it's like you had some sort of like, you're, you're, you're in like this, this, you know, uh, it's almost as if you're running the wrong race. You're in the wrong lane, you know, and you want someone to be something that they're not, or, and even if it's just your understanding of some sort of, like, baseline decency, like, hmm, your actions are speaking louder than your words here, but I keep on listening to your words instead of your actions, which is you're not making time for me. So... And what really kind of uh, gets me is that, like, I have, like, for me, I'm getting too personal here, but for me, I'm, like, I'm the kind of person, like, I speak like a Sith sometimes. Like, I speak in absolutes. I'm, like, well, I, I wish I never had met that person. I, I want them to not exist in the world anymore. Not in, like, some crazy way, but digitally, like, I want to block them on Instagram. I want to not be able to run back to them because my crazy ass... Um, I end up kind of like trying to reach out back to them, you know, shout out to my Aries and Venus. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, man. So it's like, it's kind of as if you have to play some sort of middle path as Ram Dass would say, like some sort of temperance between those emotions, which kind of, the irony is that I am dealing with a Sagittarius. So... It's almost as if the key to overcoming that is that middle ground temperance there. It's like you don't want to totally block them out or something. Because it's like you give them power that way. Or you give that feeling and emotion power. But then you to you don't totally want And this is me learning temperance right now in front of you on camera. Um, <laughs> you don't want to completely expect something from anything. So there has to be some sort of fine line in the middle of that spectrum. Um... Again, two of wands energy. I, I, I two of wands and two of swords. At least there's progress. Swords are a little bit more harsher than wand energy, but this this is the two of wands right here. I think it's like, hey, wait a minute. I think I'm starting to kind of grow out of this um, harshness, and it might be not taking things so personal. Um, and then it's like I'm gonna apply myself. I'm going to give myself credit. Hmm. I don't know. And I guess somehow that's the answer. This is just redirection, rechanneling your energy. I don't know if it's quite, you know, hoping for love or anything like that, but... And I don't know if it's, I mean, you could easily say like, oh, you'll find someone if you do your soul work or if you do some sort of sincere, earnest thing that you care about, you know, or if it, even if it's just working on yourself spiritually, I kind of get that with this Eight of Pentacles here. Um, I used to read it as like some mundane, you know, nine to five, but, um, you know, me, I'm always trying to attribute some sort of deeper meaning to things. Um, at least to, you know, illuminate some, something, some form of understanding, uh, in a healthy way, I guess. But the Eight of Swords here in the reverse now, so you got two eights, meaning beginnings here. Um, Eight of Swords, I guess, is coming out of this trapped feeling. It's almost as if, like, wait, I don't need to pose myself with this either-or extreme, uh, there's something else I could do, or, or there's something I could leverage. I could take advantage of this opportunity. Again, not in a bad way, but it's like, I'm going to try to leverage this energy, you know. Um, King of Pentacles, and then it ends up paying off. You leveraging some sort of cir circumstantial, you know, forgive me, but fuckery, um, you know ends up paying off for you, ends up in a weird way helping you get further along your, your path as you need to. This King of Pentacles here. And it's just like, yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> does it did, does it and did it need to be that way? You know? 
don't know. I really don't. Um, but somehow it works out in the end, I guess. I don't know. And hopefully you attribute all credit to yourself. Um, I say that just in case you're dealing with some narcissists around you that want to take credit for things working out. Um... You know, I think we all have forms of narcissism, but, uh, you know, if you don't give yourself credit or if you don't give yourself, you know, a pat on the back, then certainly you can't wait for anyone else to do that. If you don't have, like, a healthy network of people. Yeah, so, you know, you end up overcoming these energies of aggression and, and fear and loathing and maybe anxiety or jealousy or lack i think it all stems from like uh this like just you know how you dilate time in your mind and your understanding of like immediacy versus i'm not going anywhere or this thing's not going anywhere like this person's not going anywhere And it's almost as if, like, the passion that you put in things could be self-defeating. Because um, you're so passionate in love, possibly. You're so caring, you know. Or maybe your significant other. Or maybe the, you know, person that you desire or something like that. That it ends up, like, just destroying everything on some, like, Jean Grey X-Men shit. So, you know, Aries, uh, with great power comes great responsibility, and I'm actually proud of you that you're able to, to show that mastery here, because in the strength card, this is another eight, so this is triple confirmation that once you master yourself, um, sky's the limit. Especially in your love life, you know. And I say that because, you know, this is the Empress energy right here. The Empress is usually typically featured in controlling the the lower energies here. As depicted by the two lions here. It's the Empress in the middle. And that's great mastery. That's not anything to be taken lightheartedly. Like, you know... Awesome power right there. That's real power. That's real strength. A form of mastery over the self. So, yeah, and that leads you to clarity. Boom shakalaka. Divine communication of some sort. Even if it is just clarity with yourself. I want to keep going, but I don't want to spoil the read. Yeah, double confirmation strength. This is another strength card here. See, that's that version. This is just version. It's like a prayer. You know, dare I say, pray about it. Yeah, it's another Empress right there. Boom. It's like confirmation on confirmation. Nine of swords coming out of that sleepless worry energy. It's so interesting. Okay. Okay, yeah, I think that's it. Beautiful way to end the reading, Empress. Talk about eights, 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 eight on eight on eight on eight. This whole reading has been screaming, new beginning, new beginning, new beginning. And then finally, to end it with the Empress is like, Jesus Christos, man. Beautiful birth energy. To a new form of love in your life. All because you did that work of trying to step back and understand, like, where is this coming from? Why do I feel this way? This can't be this difficult, you know. And I don't think it is. I think it's all really easy. It's just you just got to learn to 
not take things so personal, not burn things down, and not, you know, make everything such a, you know, agent of war here. Especially that, you know, Aries is in, or excuse me, that Mars is in Aries right now. Um, I think I said earlier I got my Aries in Venus, I meant I got my Mars in Venus. Um... Or excuse me, my Venus and Aries, yeah. Yeah, my planet Venus in Aries. Which is why I'm so like warlike and fiery in love departments. But um Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just that 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 is what it is. It's a beautiful takeaway. This is an awesome reading. I was really shaky at first about it, but all of this turmoil is because you've been in labor and now you're finally given birth. So, kudos on you. I wish you nothing but the highest of, you know, loves and all relationships, forms, you know, uh, friends, family, you know, personal, passionate, platonic, whatever you got there going for you. Wishing you love and light, beauty, and all that stuff. Grace and poise and good-hearted decision-making and all that good stuff, guys. Holler at your boy for a dark one-on-one reading. Link below. Feel free to like, share, follow on all social media platforms. Peace.